Hey boys, welcome back to some NRL Supercoach 2019. This is going to be the round four review. And as you can see, boy oh boy, we're having a we're having a good start to the season. Round four score, just a tick under 1,200, 1,185. Um, total score, almost 4,500. Average score, the average score being over 1,100 is excellent. And then our season rank, our season rank, we've gone up 416 spots to 463. That is excellent because the score I got is good, but it's not It's not amazing. Like, I saw even like in a couple of the leagues, I mean, like a, a fair few people got like 1,200 scores. So, it's, uh, you know, it's not... It definitely wasn't like an amazing score, but I think what happened, like a lot of the top players probably try to get Tom Trebojevic into their team, and uh, they got a bit undone from that, but uh, let's go through the team, we'll talk about the players, what I'm thinking of for this round, and there's a couple of, a couple of basically definite things I'm doing, so uh, let's go through it. Uh, Cameron Smith, he got 72 hit, uh, honestly, Cam <laughs> I was watching that game against the Bulldogs, Cameron Smith did not have a very good game, I know they kept, like, Phil Gould just won't shut up about, like, um, Cameron Smith and him, like, <laughs> dictating the game and stuff, which, I mean, he does, like, he controls the game well, but give it, good God, give it a rest, he's, <laughs> he's not, oh, just, oh, listening to Gould just, is just an absolute killer, dude. Um, but he got 72. He got that try assist. Bunch of tackles. Couple of kicks at goal. And he actually... He ran the ball a couple of times, which is nice. Um, but yeah, 72. You know, I think Smith... I'm going to... I got to stick with him. I'm probably going to want to get Damian Cook in. And I probably... You know, for what I'm thinking of... Cook definitely could come in probably next week. But uh, then we had Reed Marnie, who I put as the fourth reserve. Uh, he scored 49, which is which is decent. He is a guy that I'm probably not going to get rid of this week. Um, but next week, he's probably got to go. Um, as you can see, he still, he still went up a little bit. So he's up, you know, a bit over 30K. But I, I, I feel like this is about his peak. He might jag like a, a try assist or a try in the next couple of weeks and he could push up to like 450k, but I really don't see him getting much above that. So, you know, I think, I think my, uh, Reed Marnie, give him, you know, depending where you're at, like I'll probably be giving him one more week to hopefully jag some attacking stats and get up in price. Um, but maybe give him one or two and then I think either, you know, go down to like a, a cheaper player get some cash or trade up to a keeper like if you don't have smith or or cook or i guess even farah but i wouldn't go with farah uh then our front row where uh sam burgess 77 hit back he uh he played he got an attacking he got a try against which is good um <laughs> His, his base stats are down, dude, but he's getting these attacking stats, so got to be happy with it. Martin Depower, 54. It was a bit unfortunate because Depower, he, it looked like he was going to score really well, but then he got he got injured a little bit. He also, yeah, he just spent more time off the field than usual in that game. Um, it was also pretty hot conditions for them. So, yeah, Depower, 54. I was pretty happy with considering he was off for... A fair chunk of that game, so still happy. Ah, then we have Adam Fanua Blake, who uh, I actually brought in last week. I traded out. <laughs> it actually kills me because I traded out to Tola, who I think he got like sixty odd, which is just oh, it's fantastic. But um, I traded to Tola up to Adam Fanua Blake, four hundred eighty k now. He was only four fifty. Because he hadn't actually increased because he, he was suspended round two, I think it was. And, yeah, he's honestly been a monster. Uh, as you can see, his lowest score is 63, which is this round. So, he's, like, good for 60, 70 points. And he just looks really solid, honestly. Um, 
<sighs> oh, excuse me. I'll probably try to edit that out. Um, just sneezed. <laughs> so you probably aren't going to hear it, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was building up for a while. I was, <laughs> I was, I was seeing if it would go away, but it just kept tickling, and uh, it uh, it was coming, dude. But uh, yeah, Fanil Blake, uh, back to him. He's uh, he's a monster, and I was very worried for uh, for a while there because he he went down injured so many times in that game, and again, I think he was off the field for probably longer than usual. And he still banged out 63 points. I don't I don't think he threw an offload either. And uh, he's usually good for a couple. So I'm pretty happy with uh, with Fanil Blake into the side. Uh, McCarley didn't play. He's he's been one of my flops for uh, for a trades, but I don't know. It's uh, we'll see what happens with him. There's definitely some options going forward. Obviously, Payne Haas is probably an option, not for this week, but uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, then we move to the back row, which was pretty solid. Um, we have we have uh, Jake Jabojevic, 66, decent. Cameron Murray, 81. Again, Murray just he just does the business, dude. He just does the business. How do I get rid of this freaking screen, dude? <laughs> I thought that was like an X button. Where the freak? Oh well, who cares? I'll just click on Murray then. Um, oh, there you go. It must have been up top. Um, so yeah, Cameron Murray, 81, killed it. Jai Arrow, once again, I could have, oh, I could have scored really well, but I had Jai Arrow as my captain, who, again, it's not terrible, like, he got over 100 with the captaincy, but, yeah, just, uh, every week, I just haven't chose, I just can't choose the right captain, so, yeah, I don't, it's, it's tough, I feel like, I should just captain Tedesco now, from now on, but Tedesco's probably liable to come up with a, with a shocker. Um, but then we move on to the bench here. Sean Lane, 36. I will talk about him later, but Sean Lane, he is one of my players I am definitely getting rid of. Sean Lane has got to go, dude. He's got to go. Uh, Britton Acora, just absolute monster, dude. 62. He's already gone up. 80, no, he's gone up almost 200k already, unreal, and then Flegler, 24, so, I mean, he, he's increased pretty well, I, um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with him, uh, then our halves, so, uh, Nathan Cleary, 54, he was terrible, basically, again, he did kick the, the conversion from the sideline, and then he kicked a drop goal to win the game, um, so he did win the game for the Panthers, although he was pretty shocking once again, but he got 54, so I'm, I'm, I'm content with that, uh, how much has he gone down, probably not that much, 73, not, not great, but, you know, not bad, uh, Kalen Ponga, a couple of beautiful try assists, that first pass, dude, to Edric Lee, good lord, he has got a just a killer pass, which is crazy, like, how skillful he is, because his running game is obviously the most dangerous, but he's got, he's got the passing game, just unreal, but, um, Ponga, he's sort of stabilizing, I think, you know, if you couldn't get him in last week, I mean, you've sort of got to get him in, um, because he's gonna, I feel like he's gonna stay at this level, and then potentially go back up, uh, and then obviously, Kieran Brown didn't play, both of these guys have probably got to go, but it's no rush at the moment. So, Kieran, obviously, the man to get in is Tavita Harris, who has replaced him, and also kicking goals, which is funny. But, um, honestly, I've got two more pressing trades because uh, Tavita Harris isn't going to go up in price this week, and Kieran's not losing money, so there's, there's no real point to get uh, Harris in at the moment. I'll, uh, I'll get to my two trades in a second here, but our back line, just outstanding once again. I actually, so you'll see here, so what I did, and this is what's so good about Clint Gutherson, I picked him up at fullback, but I can swap Gutherson, Allen, Simonson, oh, if we go here, so I've got Allen, Simonson, Gutherson, and Nooker Klockstad, who are wing centers slash fullbacks, which is very handy, because in this game, Obviously, as it was before, I would have had to play like Corey Allen or 
I mean, obviously, in hindsight, Ravalara would have been a good, a good player to play, but a bit risky. So I traded in him um, and put, uh, who was it, Marnie as the fourth reserve. So, yeah, Gutherson, I mean, he's honestly an absolute... He's easily my, my number one pickup this year. Whether he's going to be the best at the end of the season, probably doubtful, but honestly, like, he was a, he was a pod, and he's just... 81 average, dude. He's ab- He must be the highest average, right? Sam Burgess, 81 as well. Yeah, Gutherson, killing it. John Bateman, 58. He got 58, and he was pretty quiet in that game. Nickel Klockstad, 86. Again, unreal. How much has he gone up? Um, 150K. How much has Gutherson gone up? Like 200K? 140? Okay. And then Jack Bird, 58. He could have... <laughs> You know, man, Jack Bird, what a pickup! But again, he could have gone. He could have got a huge, well, not a huge, but a much better score if he wasn't an absolute idiot and uh, and caught that ball. And then James Tedesco, eighty four. So he <laughs> he started so expensive, but he's he's already stabilized. Like he had a couple of bad weeks. Like what's his lowest score? He got a twenty three. <laughs> he got a twenty three in round one, and he's still kept his 700k price tag that's unbelievable um and then Ruben Garrick got 17 Ravalara 59 which is good and Simonson didn't play Corey Allen 28 so the two trades that I will be making I think Ruben Garrick has to go um he's got 280k he's gone up over 100k which is good and you know he he's gonna start coming down obviously. He got a 17 this week, but he still went up like a good chunk because he scored well the last couple of weeks. He's going to have to score pretty well to even stay at this level and then like excellently to sort of increase in price. So I feel like he's got to go and you know, if you can, if you don't have like the two guys that have to come in, uh, Jay Nockenbohr from the Bulldogs, he's sort of a must-have this week because he's going to go up in price. And then next week, uh, Bronson Sherry is a must-have. So if you've already got those guys um, and you've got Ruben Garrick and you don't really have anyone else to get, I mean, I can see sort of just holding on to Garrick, hoping he goes up a little bit more. But uh, for me, basically, cash in now, I think... You know, he could go up in price, but I think he's basically hit his peak. With Tom Trebojevic out, I think the Seagulls are going to struggle to score points again. And, yeah, he's going he's gonna to struggle. Uh, and the other guy is Sean Lane, who's got to go out. I just... <laughs> I was so happy at the start of the year with Lane. He was looking so good. But he's honestly the laziest player I've ever seen. He's so lazy. Watching that... Look at his points per minute, my God. Watching that game, um, it was actually blowing my mind. He would just bludge on the wing and not even look to take hit-ups. It was killing me. And he does... He barely... He makes he makes a few tackles, but he barely runs the footy. Um, it feels like they only give it to him in the attacking zone, which is good because he, he's capable of getting tries and try assists, but... Other than that, I I just feel like, you know, it it was a it was a good pickup at the start I thought, but I think now it's just not worth it. So I've got a couple of couple of options here, um, and I guess they're the two ones I have to get rid of this week. And then other guys, I mean, Marnie I've talked about. I'm pretty much going to get rid of him pretty soon. Uh, Flegler, um, you know, he's probably one to go soon as well. Uh, Kieran Brown, both these guys probably got to go. Kieran will just pick up Tavita Harris probably next week. And then, I mean, hopefully, I mean, Ravalara, he's, he only went up, he's, uh, he's in for a big price rise next week as well. Um, so obviously going to keep him for a little bit. Hopefully he can jag a few more tries, get up to over 300k as well. And honestly, the fact that it's not good, but if the fact Tom Chaboyevic is out, it makes it so much easier. Honestly, I probably could have picked Chaboyevic up this week, but I probably I would have had to got rid of like Nickel Clockstad, um, 
probably, which I don't want to do. So, one player I've got to bring in is Jaden Ockenbohr from the Bulldogs. So, the cool thing about Ockenbohr is that he is dual second row and back line. So, there's <clears throat> there's a few things... <sighs> There's some there's some temptations here. So Sean Lane, let, let's just let's look at this for a second. Sean Lane out. I've got 537k in the bank. Um, so who can I afford? Up these top guys. I don't have Reese Martin. I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna get him. Hopefully, he goes down a little bit in price. Uh, Tarpany, I'm not gonna go near. And then the main two like Angus Cryan, Viliami. Kikau. They're the two guys that I'm looking at. Kikau, I'm probably going to wait on because, you know, he only got 51 the first week and he's hopefully going to drop in a, in price a little bit. But when he's back to full fitness, like, he's he's going to be pretty must-have, in my opinion. Um, I mean, even Ryan Madison's not a not a terrible shout. He's been, uh, he's been pretty good, honestly. Uh, but Angus Crichton, he's gone down 70k. He's, I mean, it's still a bit of a worry because he, <laughs> I don't know, like he started obviously, I don't know, like the Roosters, if they just start him in the back row for 80 minutes, like he's definite pick up at 577, um, but yeah, any other guys, like I mean, I've got Cameron Murray, Penguin Jr., no thank you, Madison, like I was talking about, you know, could do, but then the rest of these guys, not really interested, honestly, um, I mean, Delphi Nuke is not bad, but, you know, not really interested, uh, so, we could, so we could bank a huge amount of cash if we get an Ockenbohr, so, as you can see, he's got 102, he's gonna skyrocket in price, and he's dual second row and center, which is great, but I could do that. And if the funny thing is, if I did this, I could have got Tom Trebojevic this week easily. I would have had so much money. But I feel I'm just going to do this change now. Um, just see what it looks like. So Ruben Garrick, he's going out. And I'm going to pick up... Because you can you can reverse changes. Um, and I probably, I'll probably toy around with this. See, see how we go. Okay, so there we go. Ockenbohr in, Ruben Garrick out. And uh, that frees up a bunch of cash. 150k um, working with. And then, if we trade out Sean Lane, we can pick up anyone we want, basically. Um, we can't actually get Tamalolo, which is why. <laughs> we could get Reese Martin. <laughs> um, but we can easily get Angus Crichton. So, yeah, I'm going to... At the moment, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel it for now because I'm I've got to see like the team list and stuff just to uh, even like see it. I'm just gonna reverse these just so I don't like forget or something. <laughs> but yeah, so this video is going on for probably long enough. You guys are probably sick of it by now. But yeah, that, that's sort of what I'm looking at. Uh, those two guys have to go, and it's just a it's a decision who I want to bring in. I think I think Crying is budget at 577k, but I'm just still unsure about if he's going to be playing 80 minutes for the for the Roosters. It's it's killing me. But I mean, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. But uh, regardless, hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. Um, hopefully you guys are going decently in your <laughs> with your teams. Um, not as good as me, but uh, pretty well. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.